There's, there's a great story of two, two lumberjacks where every morning they start chopping wood at the same time and every day they stop chopping wood at the same time. And every day one of the lumberjacks disappears for about an hour in the middle of the day and every day he chops more wood than the other guy. And this goes on for months. And eventually the one who works all day, he says, I don't understand. Every day we start at the same time. Every day we stop at the same time. Every day you disappear for about an hour in the middle of the day and every day you chop more wood than me. Where do you go for that hour? And the other lumberjack looks up and goes, oh, I'll go home and sharpen my ax. You know, that, that if, you, if, you, if you take an infinite mindset, it's not about how much you can get done each day. It's how much you can get done over the course of a career or over the course of a lifetime. And, and you, you got to take vacations, which means you turn off your email and you turn off your phone and you do not connect to the office. You know, go sharpen your ax. Like you do, you take a Friday afternoon off. You know, we have something called duvet days in, in our company where uh, um, where it's you wake up in the morning and you just can't do it. And it's not like asking, you know, it's not like vacation days yeah. where you plan ahead and it's not like sick days, you know, where you're you're actually sick. Like you're, you're not sick. You just you just don't want to do it or I'm just not feeling it. Today. You're just not you're, feeling you're, it. And you just you can't yeah. do it. And you, and you do it responsibly. You can't leave your team in the lurch, obviously. Sure. You know, we, you have to exercise um, responsible freedom. But we give people an opportunity instead of lying and pretending that they have a stomach bug um, because they just can't face the day, that they can just call up and say, I'm, I'm taking a duvet day. And everybody goes, go, go, we got you, you know, go. Tell someone I need help. Like, I think it is one of the, it's one of these skills that is becoming fast lost, especially amongst a younger generation, which is the skill to ask for help. You know, we're all trying to act so tough. You know, this, this nation over-indexed on the whole rugged individualism thing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, where we define success as individual success. Um, and, and most of our metrics, most of our incentives and in almost every job are individual incentives. There, you know, there's no team bonus, there's an individual bonus if you hit your numbers, you know? Um, and uh, I think we've, we've overdid it, quite frankly. Uh, and I think it's, the pendulum needs to come back uh, and, and, and we have to remember that we're a team, we're members of teams, we're members of families, we're members of communities, we're members of societies. And this is where Maslow got it wrong. You know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. He says, you know, fundamentally at the bottom of the pyramid is food and shelter. Um, and he put, you know, third, you know, third up the rung, he put uh, 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 relationships. Well, I've never heard of anyone dying no. by suicide because they were hungry. I've heard of people dying by suicide because they were lonely. So in other words, it can't be right. And at the top, you have self-actualization. How, oh, like I'm all self-actualized looking down at the rest of you who aren't at the top of the pyramid. What about shared actualization, you know? And the mistake he made is that there's a paradox, which is every moment of every day, we are both individuals and members of groups. And every day we have to reconcile that. Do I put myself first at the expense of someone else or do I prioritize someone else at the expense of myself? And the answer is you're right and you're wrong. And there's a whole group of people that says, no, no, you always take care of yourself first because if you're not healthy, you can't help others. And there's another group of people that says, no, you always help others first because unless you help them, they won't be there for you. It's a paradox. It doesn't work. It's not so clean. Um, and this is what we have to reconcile every day. Um, and this is why finding balance and managing it and the stresses and trains, but the, the, the challenge of asking for help and relying on our community really, really matters. My, my, my definition of faith is that knowing you're on a team even when you don't know who all the players are. Um, there, oh, we, are we are surrounded by people who love us and will take care of us. You just have to ask sometimes because sometimes they don't know that we need it. The reality is I'm an idiot. Yeah. Like, and I'm not, being, I'm not being flip about it. Like, yeah. I don't understand very complicated things. And so I ask a lot of questions so that the person who's telling me something complicated, who's talking in terms as if I understand them, sure. finance or neuroscience, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And I ask enough questions just so that I understand it. So is what you're saying this? No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, what are you, so yeah. I, I, with most, I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. So a long time ago, I had a client, they were a, 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 a public company and uh, they brought me on um, to do some work for them. But the, the, they invited me to sit in on a meeting from the consultant that they had hired. Um, and so all the C-level executives and me, and this consultant was giving a presentation about something. Like and this is junior marketing. This is when I had my little marketing company. And every, all the C-level executives were sitting there nodding and taking notes on the, on the, you know, on the 
PowerPoint that they had printed up in front of them. And I had it as, with, as well, and I didn't understand a freaking word of it. Yeah. Right? I was like looking around, like, yeah, I'm. You know, and I, so I'd raise my hand and say, I'm really, really sorry. I know I'm the only person in this room without an MBA, but this doesn't make sense. Like you say, A plus B equals C, but based on your logic, A plus B equals D. I'd, can you just say it again, because I'm really, I'm really sorry to slow the meeting down, everybody. You know, and you could see the consultant getting frustrated with me, and we're trying to explain it again. I said, I'm so sorry. And one by one, all the C-level executives said, yeah, I don't understand it either. Now, if the idiot hadn't spoken up yeah. and said, I don't understand, they all would have nodded their heads yeah. for fear of looking stupid, because they didn't understand. Yeah. And it would have, they would have paid a lot of money for a document they didn't understand, and they would never have used it and would have sat on a shelf. Um, and it's, it's because I'm, I'm okay being the idiot. Like, that's why I'm not being flip. I'm okay. Everybody in the room going, oh, because I have to ask questions until I understand it. But the reality is, is once I can get to the point where I understand it, I can get it so simple that I understand it, and I can say it in simple terms, that means other people understand sure. it too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, it's, yeah. there's a lot of value being the idiot.